had it not been for the Nebraska Department of Corrections doing what they knew what they supposed to have been. And they never gave me an opportunity. They never gave me an opportunity for treatment because I wouldn't take the medicine. Mr. Nico Jenkins was an indiscriminate killer who wreaked havoc on the Omaha area since being released from prison on July 30th. He crossed racial, gender, and city boundaries to commit his murders. It is rare to have a killer cross racial and gender lines, so law enforcement knew we had an exceptionally violent offender. He was charged with four counts of murder, four counts of being a felon in possession, and four counts of use of a firearm. He already faced charges for terroristic threats when he threatened a woman's family. They also arrested the man who gave Nico the weapon he used in his killings. In November of that year, uh, Nico had been in jail about two months at this time. Uh, he decided to write a letter to the Omaha World Herald. In the letter, he asked the paper to help him and the families of his victims, and he writes that he will plead guilty to all charges. He writes that he wished to get the help he so clearly needs, psychiatric treatment, as the health department had full knowledge of Apophis and the demonic forces at work. Yes, this is real life. In February 2014, Nico filed a federal lawsuit seeking $24.5 million from the state of Nebraska for wrongfully releasing him from prison and not giving him mental health treatment. He also blamed corrections officials for the four murders he committed. Oof, that's not going to go over well. Portraying Nico Jenkins as a cold-blooded killer but his wife says he never got the help he needed. And his psych evaluation shows he needed mental help as early as the second grade. That's when he says a voice told him to bring his mom's gun to school. A voice Nico now says is an Egyptian demon forcing him to kill. He's not pretending to be crazy. He's real life crazy. That Apophis gives him orders. Nico told her Apophis saved him from attempting suicide in solitary confinement a few years ago. It was his voice that came and he was just like, if you do what I tell you to do, if you follow my demands, then I'll make sure you're safe and make sure you're okay. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, judging by his upbringing, the time he spent in prison, his crimes, the interrogation footage, the letters, mother of God, this poor man, he never got the help he so clearly needed. The system failed him. He never got any treatment for the issues he so clearly has. This was a complete failure of the health system. Well, twist. Well, and Brandy, we've heard it before. An Egyptian god speaks to Nico Jenkins, but a psychiatrist in court today says he thinks Jenkins is faking it, while another doctor from Douglas County Corrections testified of all the people he's evaluated, Jenkins is by far the most dangerous. You wouldn't want to mess with Nico and be on his bad list, I'll tell you right now. After the judge ordered a psychiatric evaluation of Nico Jenkins, the psychiatrist concluded that he had antisocial personality disorder and was likely faking psychotic symptoms and that he was making up the voices he heard as a way to justify his actions, essentially finding that he's a sociopath who would not be amenable to treatment. His defense's doctor says he's schizophrenic, while Lincoln Regional Center doctors say he's got a personality disorder, but he isn't clinically insane. Jenkins says he heard the voice of an Egyptian god while carrying out the murders. The 31-page report entered into district court details dozens of evaluations of Jenkins at the Lincoln Correctional Center and his history from a child through adulthood. Clinical psychologist Kurt Newring with Forensic Behavioral Health reviewed the report and says there's a pattern of antisocial behavior. Mm. Part of the, is he competent or is he not, but it, it resonates pretty clearly in the evaluation that this is a man that has, over his lifetime, manipulated others, deceived others, abused others, and has taken satisfaction in doing that. It seemed, based on the report provided, these symptoms came up when he needed them and disappeared when he didn't. Yeah, that's not good. After being declared competent to stand trial, the court case began. On his request, Nico was allowed to represent himself. Throughout the trial, he maintained that he acted under the command of Apophis, and still did. And he put on quite a show for the court, including speaking in tongues, howling, and laughing as prosecutors recounted the details of his victims' deaths. On April 16th, 2014, 
the judge found Nico Jenkins guilty of all four murders. Now, during Nico's time in prison while awaiting trial, he decided to pass the time by making some body modifications. The Department of Corrections under fire again, and injury behind bars is raising questions. Family members and state senators want to know why officials can't put a stop to it. One inmate involved in nearly a dozen incidents behind bars. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Griswold. And I'm Craig DeGrelli, convicted killer Nico hello, hello. injured himself yet okay, again. Good. Now prominent state senators are asking, how does this keep happening, and where is the supervision? For example, in 2015, he had the hold on, hold on. Hold on. 666 onto his forehead, or rather he tried to. The carving he made on his face was backwards, funnily enough, because he did it looking into a mirror. So now it just looks like a bunch of upside down nines, I guess. But if you were to see him in a mirror, holy sh! He also uh, decided to carve the word Satan on his face and cut his tongue so it would be like a snake's and suffered nine lacerations when he did so. He then smeared blood all over the What? That's some bullshit. I let go like a second before that. You're so gay. That's some bullshit. Loved and got off on the reactions of fellow inmates. But when the uh, other inmates wouldn't react and wouldn't call for medical aid because they presumably were just used to it, that's just Nico doing Nico things, then he would start to panic and be like, oh, I need help. I mean, he sounds just like a child. He did all this with razor blades. Uh, no one knows how he got them. Someone was obviously slipping them to him. He would also do things like drink his own pee pee and snort his own. <clears throat> Jizz. And, oh boy, uh, he took an action that many would consider drastic. Listen up, lads. He attempted to cut his penis with a razor into the shape of a serpent and did enough damage to require 27 stitches. I'm sorry. Jenkins has since mutilated his face, tongue, and penis and attempted to hang himself at least twice. He also swallowed a set of keys. Dicks already kind of look like snakes, though, so uh, I don't think we'll ever know what his dream of a snake dick will ever look like. Hopefully. Prosecutors have said Nico told prison employees that he self-mutilates so he can use the insanity defense and embarrass the administration. Life or death will be up to the three-judge panel in the case against convicted spree killer Nico Jenkins. This morning, attorneys argue if Jenkins' IQ was high enough for him to even have a death penalty hearing. A test when he was first incarcerated in 2003 suggests his IQ was 69, which is under the threshold. Jenkins himself objected to his own attorney's questioning and wanted to get right to the three-judge panel. I want to expose these, these temporal physical evidence and these perjury that these officers committed before I was ever charged. Judge Peter Battalion orders the hearing move forward and Jenkins retard. is competent. Jenkins tells me he pleaded no contest because he wanted to keep his family from being implicated in the murders, but now says that he was set up. He will testify in the death penalty hearing and says he wants to expose the corruption. The internal affairs investigation on Douglas County Sheriff's and Omaha Police Department have been filed, and those, those law enforcement agencies need to file those investigations to those camera physical evidence of the law enforcement officers. Oh, you fucking dildo. What are you guilty? Thanks, you fucking idiot. Psychiatric evaluations he had. Nico Jenkins was sentenced to death by a three judge panel. He was also sentenced to 450 years in prison on weapons charges connected with the murders. Seems a bit like overkill, but uh. The defendant's commission of these four murders over a 10 day period is one of the worst killing sprees in the history of this state. Each one of these murders was a deliberate and planned act. The victims were pre-selected and the murders were purposeful. Therefore, this panel finds the death penalty is appropriate, should be, and is hereby given for each of the four murders by the defendant. It is therefore the sentence of this court as follows. At case CR 13-2768, count one, murder of the first degree, a class Class one felony. Booyah! Count two, use of a deadly weapon, firearm to commit a felony, a class one C felony, 45 to 50 years to run consecutive to all murder convictions and counts one, 
4, 7, and 10. Count 3, possession of a deadly weapon by a prohibited person. Class 1D felony, 45 to 50 years to my consecutive to all murder convictions. Fuck. That's not good. Not good at all. Not good at all. In 2018, Nico attempted suicide in prison by slashing his own throat. And he did so again in 2019 by pulling tiles off the wall and sharpening them. And reportedly did some damage to his eyes and neck. The attorney said that Nico's attempts on his own life must be in the double digits by now. Now this case is as insane as Nico Jenkins is. However, multiple psychiatrists, uh, after they evaluated him, said he was saying he knew what he was doing, yet he would be like, no, I, uh, an Egyptian snake god told me to kill people, I need treatment. However, there are conflicting reports, and some psychiatrists did find that he had schizophrenia, so... Among the documents WOW 6 News obtained is a psychiatric diagnosis and re-evaluation of Jenkins. It explains a number of things about Jenkins' current thinking. That Jenkins no longer admits to killing four people in a 10 day span back in 2013. Okay, move, move, move. He'll eventually be let out of prison and moved to Cuba, where he'll make nuclear weapons at the direction of evil demons that continue to speak to him. And that he needs to be killed so he can be resurrected. All of those things and many more outlined led to this conclusion from Dr. Bruce. He did. Quote, Mr. Jenkins is not now competent to stand trial. But when they prescribed him medication for this, he would. What? To take Just get out of here, guys. Honestly, I'm dead. Regardless of his mental state, he never really had a chance. He had a shitty upbringing surrounded by shitty people. And he did start taking medication finally in 2018, and apparently his mental state improved. So a year later, he did then try and claw his own eyes out. So, I mean, he clearly has some deep seated mental, serious psychotic issues. Right? Well, most recently, this year in 2019, Fuck. He projected the notion that he had any mental illness. So, and if you're mentally ill, you can't get the death penalty. So, either he is seriously mentally ill, or it's the defense trying to prove it. But the courts, they're not having any of it. However, this case was clearly brought about by a sick mind, a system that failed somewhere along the road. And it ended up with four people losing their lives. It's disturbing, tragic, and everything. Fuck! And that's the story of... Wow, you're a bitch, dude. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Please let me know your thoughts on this case in the usual place, because it's one of the weirder ones I've covered. And thanks again. I will see you real soon in the next video. Thank you. <laughs> All right, run, motherfucker. Please tell me it's open. Man, it's not even fucking open. Are you serious? Hey, you and well, my name is Mike, and in this little video, we're gonna cover something I've been asked to cover quite a bit. So, um. You're welcome. This is the case of Kanika Jenkins, and on the surface it seems quite simple. But once you dig into it, you come across a buttload of theories about what really happened the night she went to a hotel, party there, somehow walked into that uh, hotel. Street, I can't believe I made it. And, well, stayed there. From social media videos to CCTV footage, some of it gives credence to the idea that something nefarious was going on in the Crown Plaza Hotel. Kind of, if you squint. So what really happened to Kanika Jenkins? Well, in this video we'll go through it all and see if we can Man, I did pretty good that game. sort of conclusions.